I just picked up this military trailer and I'm gonna convert it into an off-road overlanding trailer. So, this 1981 M105A2, I believe, uh, just popped up on Facebook Marketplace and I just had to scoop it up. Now, let me tell you guys a little bit about this trailer. This is a big trailer. It's just over six feet wide on the inside and just over nine feet this way. And then if you count the tailgate, it goes down to like 11 feet. So this is a huge trailer and it's heavy. It's an old school trailer built in 1981. It weighs in dry around 2,600 pounds. So I'm gonna tell you guys all about my plans for this trailer, but first, let me know in the comments below what you guys think I should do with this. I'm interested to hear your guys' ideas. So there's a couple goals in mind with the trailer. The first thing is the overall goal is to use it for overlanding camping and it's kind of big to like take through trails. So maybe having this as a base camp so I can uh, go to a trail and then leave this as a base camp, go wheel and then come back to it. Something I noticed when I went to Easter Jeep Safari uh, is we had the rooftop tent on top of the truck, which was super rad, but every morning I had to break the tent down, go to a trail, come back, set it back up. Um, so we're going to be building a rack for this so we can put the rooftop tent up here. We're probably going to add a toolbox um, for extra storage of tools and parts. Also, probably figure out some sort of shower setup, uh, extra water. Let's get some batteries on here with some solar panels. We're going to do, hopefully, the full thing. I just don't know exactly how I'm going to do all of it. And there are some things that we need to address first. Um, like I said before, firstly is the weight. Um, there's, there's some ways we can lighten it up. And also with that, if you guys check this out. Now feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, these are air over hydraulic brakes. I believe that's the term. So uh, these airlines would hook up to the air brakes and then run the hydraulic brakes to use them. So uh, we need to, with the trailer this big, and we're going to add some weight to it, we need to be able to slow it down, stop it. So um, that might mean we need to replace this axle uh, with a more traditional axle with electric brakes. So that might be one of the first things that I'm pretty sure will save a lot of weight doing that. So. Um, that is definitely something that needs to be done. Also, uh, this big old guy up here, this thing flips down and is the jack and you can roll it around really, really heavy. So I'm pretty sure we can swap out a different jack, save some weight there. That pretty much addresses for the most part, um, the weight. Now, as you guys can see, this big old thing is, uh, the military plug. Uh, there's a lot of pins in here see all that so what I went ahead and did at least for now I just added some lights um, we got a side marker light it came in a kit and we went ahead and um, these actually bolted into the factory location because the original military lights are 24 volts so they wouldn't work so now we have some really bright LEDs so as you guys can see the LEDs are pretty bright this was just a kit on Amazon I'll put a link in the description if you guys are interested in picking up um, a set of these trailer lights for something that you have going on. Uh, also, you'll notice, you know, there's a little bit of damage to repair. We're gonna bend this tow hook back up and bend that one back in. And what I was told was that this was a trailer for generators and I believe those are like mounting points. And then if we come over here, now, I don't know for sure if this was generator related. If somebody knows, feel free to let me know. Um, but they cut a hole here. There's like a little panel that was in here, a couple plugs and stuff. So I don't know if a generator sat in there or, or what this was. So we're going to cut a piece of sheet out and weld that in, fix that hole. Also, something that I'll be bummed about uh, to lose if we swap the axles is it's got these uh, manual brakes that you can pull to lock each wheel. Makes it super nice so if you stop put the foot down, lock the wheels. Um, you have a really nice secure uh, area for your tent and everything. There's a little foot under here that folds down uh, and support the back, so that's also really nice. So, big, huge, sturdy platform for us to make into a nice trailer. 
Well, I mean, it's already a trailer. A nice overlanding setup. You're probably asking why I didn't go with one of the newer, smaller aluminum military trailers. It'd be a little bit better setup, smaller, lighter. You could probably take that through some trails. Um, and yeah, you'd be right. That, that would be better. But when this came up for a steal of a deal, I couldn't pass it up. And if you've watched any of my videos before, sometimes you gotta just, you know, you gotta go with the flow. You gotta work with what's uh, been given to you. When something like this falls into your lap, the plus side is, for how big it is, is there's so much we can do with it. Uh, it's, there's a ton of room on this thing, and I'm really excited. Like I said, so, I still haven't ironed out all the details of what I'm gonna do, obviously. I'm toying around with a lot of things going on in my head. I'm not gonna tell you guys too much in case I don't follow through with something. But, uh, one thing that I would love your guys' opinion on, if you're interested, is once this uh, trailer build is done, do we sort of leave it the uh, the old military green here? Do we repaint it military green? We paint it maybe military tan? Or kind of toying with the idea of painting it the firecracker red to match the gladiator? So I'm kind of torn. I mean, that is pretty much all the details of the trailer as far as I can recall. I just wanted to let you guys know that this is gonna be an ongoing build series. Uh, might be a little slow, because I've got a, lot, got a lot of projects going on, as you guys know, if you're familiar with the channel. Still tons of stuff to do to the Gladiator, lots of work to do on the Samurai, and now I got this thing to deal with. So, um, great problems to have. I love being able to do projects like this. That's gonna do it for this uh, super quick video. Um, I did film a little, uh, it was a YouTube short, but I'll throw that in here. Right after I got this, I, there's this little like uh, off-road little section off one of the streets I know. So I had to take the trailer down there. Oh, speaking of, you'll see in this video that I'm about to show the trailer, because this is a one and a half ton trailer, <laughs> when it goes over any sort of obstacles, it, it just, like the whole trailer just moves, right? There's like no suspension. So if you guys check this out. It's got, the springs are so stiff, so that's just another thing uh, that we'll be doing is removing some leaves out of the pack because I have to check the data plate to be sure, but I think this trailer was rated to hold like over 7,000 pounds inside. I'm never gonna put that much in there. Also, it sits just a kiss high on the Gladiator right now, uh, which is fine, not a big deal, um, but that'll lower it down, just hopefully level it out, which would be nice. That's gonna do it for this one, guys. Um, let me know your thoughts and I'm toying with the idea of taking this like like I said I know it's heavy right now but taking this like on a little trail um, let me know if that's something you guys would want to see I think it'd be kind of funny uh, to drag this over some obstacles as always I'll see you guys in the next one